Bear attention, day one. Bear attention. When the rug gets pulled out from under you, when the trap door opens up beneath you, when you're unaware, without warning, things are not going to go as you planned. The best laid plans and plan all you want, you know? In the end, what happens, happens. Be prepared. Uncertainty is inevitable, and a false sense of security is the only kind there is. So hold on loosely. Sure, it's winter in North America, and anything could happen, and it did. Once in a generation storm is what some meteorologists called it. The, the pessimist in me says, Mother Nature just gave you the big fuck you. But I swear I didn't do anything to deserve it. How narcissistic of me to take it personally, like nature herself had a plan to upset my apple cart. Shit, that sounds too much like believing in some Old Testament vengeful God to my ears. Now, I should just remember one of Ruiz's four agreements. Never take anything personally, but that still does little to salve the wound. I feel like the archaic anxiety of the wound of abandonment is destined to come alive when things go asunder. Her flight was canceled and the rest of our holiday plans. When you only see your paramour a handful of times in a year, every moment counts. Something rare and precious when denied leaves a mark. So what does it mean? We strive and we struggle to find firm places to stand while the ground beneath us opens up to the abyss. I'm left clutching at straws. Such is the life of an alchemical aphorist, I suppose. But meaning, lessons learned, have no expectations. If the two natural shocks that flesh is heir to are abandonment and overwhelmment, why must they come together as a torturous duo? I mean, the moment I feel abandoned, I am instantly overwhelmed by the feeling of the need to fill the hole that's left inside. And conversely, if I feel overwhelmed by the endless litany of items on my to-do list, I tend to desire abandoning even my own dreams and passions. It's a cruel teeter-totter in the playground of fools. Of course, it's just that which leads the fool to the edge of the cliff blithely prepared to step off. Which brings to mind a time when I was in the Grand Canyon, late at night on the North Rim. My friend Bill and I had been driving all the way from Anchorage, Alaska. We were about halfway through our transcontinental journey when, or at least I, had been imbibing Meyer's dark rum most of the day. Now it's 1 a.m. and we're mesmerized by the vision of the Grand Canyon folding and falling off into the dark beneath our spectral canopy of stars above us. I noticed a spire in front of me, a column of stone rising from the floor of the canyon, a protozoic sandstone pillar with a flat surface about eight feet in diameter about the same distance away from where I stood. This seemed reasonable at the time. The question, what would it look like from over there? So I jumped. Later, Bill confessed in tears to me that he was certain I had decided today is a good day to die. But that thought never crossed my mind. I had no doubt. This is until I returned to that same spot the next morning after the sun rose. One minuscule mistake would have led me straight to hell, a thousand foot drop at least. I was stunned. I was in disbelief. I had taken that leap. No one could have ever convinced me it was even possible. But for that one moment, I was the number zero in the tarot. I was the fool, stepping off the edge of the cliff. It was a dramatic rendition and an apt metaphor for so many other foolish leaps that I have taken. As of yet, none of these falls have killed me, though the peril is always there. Disappointment only erodes the soul if you're unable to let go of the outcome based on expectations. I am disappointed her flight was canceled, to be sure, but I am the waterfall. I am the passing clouds. I am the ember drawing air. I am the ray of light near the mouth of the cave. I am that fool. Listen, hear my bells? They rattle to break the silence. 
We are the atonal melody of time set against an unpredictable beat. If you spend all your time trying to learn how to count, you might miss the next flight of fancy and twist the rhythm in a new direction. Victorian reductionists wanted to explain the prognostications of the Oracle of Delphi as simple random utterances caused by the inhalation of odd gases emitted from the earth. They couldn't handle the notion of anything supernatural at work. So they attempted to explain away the mystery and in doing so, missed out on the truth. All healing comes as a result of an encounter with the sacred. So jump.